Go make disciples. It is the mission Christ has given us. And for today, I'm so excited to, to have this episode because it is the very first installment of the CCF Leadership Podcast segment. And today, we are zeroing in on that word called discipleship. We will unpack what the Bible tells us about discipleship and what it is all about, why it's so important, and why we are so heavily here in CCF heavily invested in discipleship. Be sure to stick around because we're tackling questions about leadership, the struggles that um, the members and the leaders are going through, um, you know, all of these relational problems that most people are afraid to ask. I am Eric Tatanyas and I am your host for today's podcast. And I am joined, of course, none other than by our senior pastor, Pastor Peter Tanchi. Pastor Peter, thank you for having this some um, time with us. And I'm sure our members will be um, learning a lot today, um, talking about discipleship, their journey, all of their struggles, and all of these nuances when it comes to the group, as we call it here in CCF. So, Pastor Peter, um, you know, some of our listeners and our viewers today may be uh, wondering why, why CCF is named. Christ's Commission Fellowship. Can you um, share a little bit something about that? Um, how did that ke name came about? Well, that name came about from Matthew chapter 28, where Jesus tells us our main mission is to go make disciples. And it is called the Great Commission. So we call ourselves Christ Commission Fellowship because it is the mission Christ has given us. Okay, so clear, right? So we will make disciples, exactly to what um, Pastor Peter is telling us. In simple terms, Jesus' um, great commission for the church is to make disciples, coming from that verse. And because we wanted to be faithful, you know, in obeying that commandment from God to make disciples, and that's our main thing here in CCF. Okay, Pastor Peter, today we have a lot of questions for, for you about, of course, leadership. And um, first off, why do you think um, CCF put so much emphasis on discipleship? Um, you know, for some people, they think discipleship is for pastors and leaders of the church. That question is so relevant because discipleship is not just the job of pastors or leaders. If you will remember Matthew chapter 28, verses 19, 20, what did Jesus say? Go make disciples. And then he added something. Teach them to obey all that I have commanded you. Now, who is this teach them? The disciples is to teach us, teach them to obey all the command. And the major verb here is to make disciples. That is why one of the great misunderstandings of many Christians today, it is the job of the mm. pastor to make disciples? Absolutely not. Mm. It is the job of Bible teachers, Bible uh, preachers, to equip the people mm. according to Ephesians 4. My job is to equip people to do the ministry. Therefore, to make disciples is the mission of every follower of Jesus. That's so clear. Um, I think that's what we're really trying to emphasize discipleship is for everybody. And, you know, we have a term called D-group, Pastor Peter. Um, what does a D-group or a discipleship group really mean? And where do we find this some concept in the Bible? Discipleship is copied from the model of Jesus. Jesus modeled a small group. Notice when he came, when he started his ministry, the first thing he did the Bible tells us before choosing, he prayed the whole night. After praying the whole night, he chose 12. Mm. So that, the Bible says, so that he will be with them, so that they will be with him, mm. so that he can send them out. Jesus understood the principle of selection, the principle of association, mm. and the principle of relationship. Mm. So small group is crucial mm. because Without small group, 
who will journey with you. Mm -hmm. In small group, there is mutual encouragement. You can help each other. We are just simply copying the model of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the early church copied Jesus. Mm -hmm. Did you notice something? After Pentecost, what happened? The Bible tells us after 3,000 mm -hmm. came to Jesus, mm -hmm. what did they do? They met house to mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. How can you meet house to house unless you are in a small group? So the Bible tells us they met in the temple, mm -hmm. big group, and they met house to house. They had meals together. Mm -hmm. They break bread together. They share the Bible together. So that's called a small group. Mm. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to you know, forming a D group. My question will be, Pastor Peter, is what do you think are the, at least give us some top three qualities of um, a good D group leader? A good D group leader, if you look at the Bible, here are basic qualities that I would like to look for. Number one, are you familiar with that acronym? F A C T. For some people, it's F A T. F, faithful. A, available. Some people are faithful, but they don't have time, not available. T, teachable. Basic three. I added F A C, I will put the word chemistry. Okay. Because the reality is some people have relationship problem. They don't know how to relate. Mm -hmm. And if you put that in a group, sometimes the chemistry is going to be affected. Mm -hmm. So when choosing, it's important. You look for faithful people, available, not just teachable, but chemistry. To your point of um, having that chemistry with the people that you lead, you to your um, uh, D group members, um, can you suggest some activities that you know the group can do whenever they meet? Um, well, activities, I suggest you also have fun time together mm -hmm. because fun time together is how you build relationship. Mm -hmm. A small group does not always mean you have Bible study. Mm -hmm. It means you do things together. Mm. You serve together. You can probably travel together, mm. go to provinces, reach out. Whatever it is, time is essential. Mm. Second, you talk to each other, you listen to each other. It's called getting to know each other better. Mm. But most important, they must know the purpose of small group. Spending time together is really important. Yeah, yeah but the objective is to get to know each other so you can help each other come to know Jesus more, love Jesus more. Develop that meaningful interaction, you know, um, meaningful relationship. I love that. Um, we, all, we You know, in, in a D-group setting, Pastor Peter, we often hear about this term called accountability. Um, how can you define accountability and how can we, you know, actually do that in a D-group setting? Excellent question. Accountability simply means you are willing to listen mm -hmm. and you are willing to explain your behavior mm -hmm. and if needed, you are willing to change. Mm -hmm. I tell our accountability partners or small group members, I said, if you don't listen mm -hmm. to biblical counseling, don't call me your mentor or your disciple, let us just be friend. Mm. Because we can be friend, mm. but I don't want to waste my time <laughs> mentoring somebody who will not listen. Mm. When I say listen, I'm not talking about very private issues. I'm talking about what the Bible is saying versus what they are doing. Mm. You see the difference? So accountability means you are willing to listen and take mm. corrective actions. Mm. You are accountable to each other. For example, if you see me doing something that is not honoring to God, mm -hmm. and you call my attention, accountability means I'm willing to change. Accountability means I will not lie 
to you. Mm -hmm. Because your purpose and my purpose is to help each other grow. Mm -hmm. Many Christians do not like accountability. Mm. They, they want to hide mm. from each other their actions because they're embarrassed or they are not trained. They think you can be a lone ranger mm. and live the Christian life. There are many blind spots in my life mm -hmm. that I don't see. But because of accountability, others will bring it up and call my attention. Mm. And because we're accountable to each other, I'm willing to change. So what you're saying, Pastor Peter, is that um, in a D-group setting, this is where life-on-life -life encounters really happen. Yep. Um, you know, to be sharpened, as we see, say it in, from the quote the Bible, that iron sharpens iron, so another man sharpens another. Um, I'll, let's go to um, a practical um, example, Pastor Peter. For example, a, a member um, will tell a leader will, uh, and tell the leader that I don't really have to attend the service anymore because... You know, I'm already meeting with you on a weekly basis. So what's the difference of attending a service and having this D group? You mentioned about, you know, house to house, life on life. Not to be legalistic, I encourage people not just to attend small group. Mm. Because in small group, you can share. There's a lot of horizontal uh, activities going mm. on. On Sunday... The focus, what is the message from God to the entire congregation? Mm. That worship is usually called corporate worship. Now, I worship God privately. It prepares me for corporate worship. Mm. Secondly, I listen to God's word on the Sunday because it is more focused on biblical teaching rather than life on life application. So both are important. If you just focus on small group, the problem is the worship side, the vertical dimension can be lacking. And I believe if you love the Lord, you want to be with other believers, singing to God, listening to His message. It's a wonderful experience to be with other believers. There's a lot to really discuss about discipleship. Um, small group and uh, the dynamics that involves some um, the leader to the members of the D group. Now, Pastor Peter, um, we want to talk about and encourage our listeners and viewers. Um, how do we, you know, lead people to become leaders themselves? You know, we'll talk about the potential, a potential D group leader. Um, the first question will be, um, how do I know? Maybe uh, someone is asking him or herself right now. How do I know if I am ready? To lead a D group. My encouragement to all of you, I call this the law of expectation. Mm. I don't see people as they are. I see what they can become in Christ. Mm. So everybody that I disciple, I see them as potential small group leader. Mm. You see the difference? Mm. I see everybody as a potential small group leader. And that's how I treat them. Mm. And they live up to expectations. Mm. Now, I agree, not everybody can be preaching to thousands mm -hmm. because that takes gifting, right? Mm -hmm. But everybody can handle a small group. Mm. You see the difference? Yeah. So how do I know your giftedness? Mm. The best way to know is let them serve. And that's why we work mm. together. We have projects. Let's have a retreat. So you have projects, right? You're in charge of communication. You're in charge of finance. You're in charge of invitation. You, you handle small groups. You give them assignments and observe them. Mm. And people who are faithful, people who are gifted in certain areas, you will notice, wow, this guy is good. Now, people who are irresponsible, you can tell also. Mm. People who are irresponsible, trust me, they are not ready. Mm. That's how you know if somebody's ready or not. Mm -hmm. It has to do with, are they faithful? Mm -hmm. Are they available? Are they teachable? Back to basic. Pastor Peter, you know, normally we hear people say, yeah, I wanted to do that, but, you know, I have work, I have, I'm studying, you know, I have a business and a family to take care of. You know, how do we, um, uh, you know, confront this mindset? Remember the myth of time? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I love that, Pastor You Peter. will never have time. Mm-hmm. 
It depends on your priorities. Mm. I will have time for what is important. Mm. I will not have time for what is not important to me. Mm. So when people say I don't have time, they're simply saying I have other important things to do mm -hmm. that's more important than starting a group. <laughs> that's what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. Once you know this, mm. what do you do? Remember, leadership, faithful. Mm. Faithful to whom? To God. To Jesus, to mm. God. Faithful to his mission. Yep. A. Available. Available. Available to whom? To God and his people. To God. To serve. Mm. Teachable. Straight from God's word. And Correct. to the leader assigned to him. So, friends, how do you know if somebody's available? Simple. If he is faithful in small things and is available to do it. Now, usually they say they are not available, but if you act them, Pare, we have <laughs> a group that needs help. Can you help me? Can you handle it? In my experience, mm. they may reluctantly mm. agree to help, but once they start helping, mm. they enjoy it, and boom. Yeah. That is a leader in the making. It's called OJT. OJT. Yeah. On the job training. Very counterintuitive mm. to our seminary mindset today. Mm. Today, the mindset is you go through training, mm. and then after mm. you graduate, mm. you can serve. Mm. You don't see that in the model of Jesus. Mm. Jesus called them, and then he let them serve. Mm. He, does, he did not say, you wait until three years, then you serve. <laughs> That's a bad model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Pastor Peter, so a member or a potential leader is there, mm. right? You know, I wanted to do that. I'll find time. But um, I don't think I'm equipped. So what can we, you know, how can we encourage that person to, to start facilitating even if you're still trying to equip yourself? That's why I make the assignment simple. Mm. Or oh, next week when we meet together, mm. I want you to discuss the first three verses, mm. okay? You assign. Mm. And then watch them. Mm. Then help them during the week. And I tell you, I've seen this with my own eyes. Mm. This pandemic, we started two groups. Mm -hmm. Boy, they're all new. Mm. But they're all Bible teachers now. Wow. You know what they did? Mm. They attended the University of YouTube. <laughs> yeah. They <that>. researched. <laughs> and then Google. Mm -hmm. You know, have you heard of the University of Google? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they type in. Ephesians chapter 3, mm. everything comes out. They study. Mm. That's how you make people mm. learn. Mm. You make them teach so that they know they need to study. Mm. If you don't give them assignment, why will they study? Remember, adult learning is mm. based on needs. Mm. Mm. That's how adults learn. There's a need. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll study. And how, and how do you create need? Give them assignment. That's mm. why a leader has to be intentional. Mm. Many of you are watching me. You are small group leaders. The reason why your group is not growing mm. because you are not challenging your members to start a group. So you got to challenge them. How do you challenge them? Number one, you create opportunities. Mm. You train them. If you don't create opportunities, how would they start? So if we have a retreat, I will have many small groups and I said, we need facilitators. Mm. All right. You facilitate. So you create opportunities and you help them. Mm -hmm. Pastor Peter, can you suggest materials, Bible study materials that um, a person can use when they're starting? My work? goodness, CCF, we have materials running over our ears. <laughs> we have all kinds of materials. The problem is never material. You know what's the problem? The heart mm. and the leader. You know, leaders, you need to understand. You need to pray model and challenge. Mm. You see, if you don't model starting a group, they mm. will not. Mm. You got to model. Mm. And then you challenge them. But of course, you show love. It cannot be all uh, work, work, work. Yeah. There has to be love. Love is crucial. Mm. Pastor Peter, how about when a member, you know, have that desire, but the leader doesn't give an opportunity for that person to lead? I'm very sad for that person. <laughs> but you know what? Be a self-starter. Okay. You don't have to wait. Mm. If God is impressing in your heart to start, mm. 
my friend, you have my permission. You mm. have the blessing of the Lord. Start. Mm. You That's know why? Because God is telling you to mm. start a small group by all means. So opportunities, hopefully the leaders mm. will help you. But if not, you go to your area pastor. The area pastor will help you. If your area pastor will not help you, you go to your hub pastor. Mm. If the hub pastor will not help you, you come to my office. Mm. We will help you. Am I correct? I got a team with me here today. Uh, we'll all be happy to help you start a group. Yes, and to all our starters out there, go to glc.ccf.org.ph and you can start leading people to Christ. In fact, can I give them a secret? You go to the Welcome Center. Yeah. Every Sunday, we have hundreds of people coming to Welcome Center mm. first time and they want to be part of a small group. So you be there, you welcome them, and we will help you. Mm. Pastor Peter, um, what if um, uh, a member doesn't want to lead a D group? What does that say about their relationship with Jesus? Again, don't be judgmental. Only a few things. Mm. If, a, if you are a real follower of Jesus, you will want to obey him. Yes or no? Yeah. Why? Because we love him. Yes, and you call Jesus Lord. Mm. If he's your Lord, what's your role? Obey. Obey him. And your motive for obeying him is you love him mm. and he's your Lord. Mm. Now, if you don't want to obey him, mm. what does that tell me? Yeah. You better check. Mm. Why not? I always tell people, I don't judge, but I ask questions. Why not? And the Bible is clear with that. If you love me, you'll obey my commandments. So, and, and many times, if you ask me my own opinion, mm. only a few things. Number one, they don't have a real personal relationship with Jesus yet. Mm. They have religion. Mm. But maybe they don't have real relationship. Mm. They don't have the Holy Spirit. Mm. Number two, spiritually, they're sick. Mm. There is unconfessed sin. Mm -hmm. There are hindrances. Mm. It can be a husband and wife problem, relationship problem. I don't know. Mm. But he then sin. And number three, they are very sincere. They're just scared. They don't know how. Mm. But if you help them, I believe every Christian, remember our saying, Imad, mm. every member, a mm. discipler. Amen. Pastor Peter, one fear people have about leading a D group is that we will be held accountable for those that we disciple. So how can we address this fear? The reality, if you don't start, you are already held accountable for not starting. <laughs> so better obey. That's true. Now, don't be afraid to make mistakes because our way of teaching Bible is so simple. Remember, mm. obedience-based Bible study. How can you go wrong if you lead a group and your text is the Bible and your topic is the Bible and what you do is study the verses? How in the world will you go wrong? Mm. Unless <laughs> you want to invent something that is not in the Bible. Now, that's going to be problematic. That's why I suggest the best way to do is when you meet together, follow the simple principles. Number one, Get to know each other. It's mm. called fellowship, right? You warm up. In that meeting, what do you do? You ask each other, how are they doing? You talk about last Sunday's message. Mm. How do you apply it? Look at the verses. How mm. do we apply this? Mm. What does this verse mean? Can you imagine? Simple question. You read the verse. What does it mean? How do you apply this? You see how simple? Mm. What is crucial is the right mindset. They think they have to be a Bible scholar. Mm. No, no, no. You are not there to invent a new mm. doctrine. No, no. You are there to share the Bible, what the Bible is saying. Praise God. You know what? We're so encouraged. As I'm listening, you know, <clears throat> I'm, I'm learning a lot as I listen to Pastor Peter. If you were blessed by today's podcast and want to know more, you may follow Pastor Peter's Facebook page, Peter Tanchi or Dr. Peter Tanchi on YouTube. You may also listen to this episode on Spotify at CCF On Air. Last but certainly not the least, if you have other questions about discipleship and how to grow in your discipleship journey, you can visit our official training arm, GLC, at our website, 
glc.ccf.org.ph or visit our D-Leaders Corner at the official website of CCF.